There is so much that you can be doing right now to get ready for Cataclysm Classic. Due to the massive changes that come with the expansion, with many things being added, many things being changed, or some just being flat out removed, it means there is actually probably more preparation you can put into Cata than any of the expansions before. Because for those things that are going to be removed, you know you only have limited time to get them before they're gone for good. This could be from achievements to titles or even mounts, and we'll definitely cover all of that shortly. If you watch me streaming over on kick.com slash scottyj, yes, that was a shameless plug then you'll already know i am doing all of these things right now trying to get as much ticked off before the beta kicks off and my time on live servers becomes even more limited than it already is so i have compiled for you my top 10 things that you can get ready right now or at least start working on before cataclysm classic launches starting with the extremely basic number one what characters do you want at 80 ready for the pre-patch? I've already been working through many of the top 10 change videos for all of these classes and hope to have them all finished off fairly soon. So feel free to check any of those out. But the likelihood is you're going to go in with the main that you've already had from Wrath of the Lich King. Now the classes all change in really cool ways come Cataclysm. With the removal of the Hunter's Mana Bar now going onto a focus system, Warlock's no longer clogging up their bags with Soul Shards because it's just an actual class specific mechanic now where you've got three complete talent revamps across the board where every class just now feels a little bit more fresh and really the only person who knows what character you want to be when it comes to level 85 is going to be you don't listen to tier lists telling you that this class is going to be the best or that class is going to be the best because we'd already seen the sort of changes that blizzard are willing to make to help some of the lower performing specs like rep paladins getting their glyph in wrath of the lich king Ferals as well with their omen of clarity glyph so quite honestly play whatever class resonates with you the most the one thing worth bearing in mind is if blizzard do actually implement everything the way they said they're going to at blizzcom the raid lockout system is likely to remain the same so you will only be able to do 10 man or 25 man each week so if you're like me and you like doing both 10 and 25 man you're probably going to want to actually prepare two characters for cataclysm i mean at least two because the raids in cataclysm are so good you're probably going to want to do them more than twice leading on to number two which kind of falls in with number one but what character do you want to level during the pre-patch now this one isn't for everyone because you might not want to level anything at all during the pre-patch but as the entire world changes classes get their abilities at different levels the talents have been changed and the questing system and even rdf gets massive changes it would be a shame to miss out on all of that because leveling during the pre-patch will be a lot of fun and what you've got to remember is once the pre-patch is over and the game launches you ain't gonna be wanting to waste too much time leveling another character for quite some time because you're gonna be doing all your pre-raid gear in you're gonna be doing all your heroics and then ultimately getting into raids and what you've got to remember as well is it's highly likely we're gonna get goblins and wargans in the pre-patch opposed to them coming at launch so if there is a particular class that you want to level it'll be worth checking on this table here to see if you can be a goblin or a wargan and it might actually be one of these races that you want to level and the goblin starting area is actually one of my favorites moving on to number three what professions do you want on each of your characters so let's say you've followed step one and you've leveled a couple of characters and you know you're going to do a third come pre-patch how are you going to have them set up now it's highly likely if you've been playing through wrath of the lich king you've probably been raiding on multiple characters already and like i did most of them are probably engineering and jewel crafting whilst that's great right now when cataclysm launches they'll still stay decent professions don't get me wrong but you're probably not going to want all of your alts with exactly the same professions because there's going to be a lot of gold up for grabs early on when things are ridiculously expensive and also where at the moment raiding with a gathering profession is kind of frowned upon gathering professions do get actual combat benefits come cataclysm in fact if you're planning on tanking having mining on your tank is going to give you exactly the same amount of stamina as if you was any of the actual crafting professions so if you're going to be a prop paladin or let's say a blood dk or something like that there's no reason not to go in with let's say engineering and mining or blacksmithing and mining so you can actually level it without spending ridiculous amounts of gold because 
you might as well be mining anyway. Now, while that's not relevant for everyone, Herbalism gives a nice haste proc, which actually at high levels of gear is pretty decent, and Skinning gets some crit, which is probably the worst out of the three. Now, my plan personally is to have a Druid, which is Herbalism and Mining, and it will just be my Gathering character, because what you got to remember as well is Gathering in Cataclysm does actually give XP. I'm not saying it's a viable way to level really, really fast, if you've got a gathering druid like me flying around which you'll be able to fly at 60 all over eastern kingdoms and kalimdor picking up herbs and mines in the new zones you kind of don't need to worry about rushing it to 85 for it to be a competent gatherer especially if it's got some gear and it can actually hold its own when it comes to the actual crafting professions though there's not much of a difference between all of them engineering still probably sitting quite strong at the top because of the use effect on the gloves which is no longer haste is in fact a primary stat and all of these tinkers can now be used alongside enchants so no longer are you having to sacrifice an enchant on your gloves or on your boots you can use the tinker and get an enchant and actually like rocket boots is now rocket belt in cata i just thought i'd throw that in but really high chance of failure and then coming in at number four is actually setting yourself up for passive gold making so you've got all of these characters you think you know what professions you want on each of them but then you might have some characters that you don't play that much or even plan on playing that much and you might as well use them to literally get free gold every day now this really revolves around alchemy because the true gold transmute will be the biggest passive gold maker you'll do but dual crafting still has a prism that you can make each day which will have some gems in tailoring cloth cooldowns change quite drastically now there's several of them but all on a weekly cooldown but unfortunately unless it changes the cloth is actually bind on pickup so whilst you would be able to make an epic tailoring item and sell that it's not really passive gold as in you use the cooldown and then put the single cloth on the auction house the only way you can make one of these items each week would be to get five chaos orbs from heroic dungeons so this is what i mean by it's not exactly passive but every second week just using the five cooldowns that you get available from each of the volatiles which are basically eternals as we know it in wrath of the lich king so you've got volatile water life earth fire and air you use 30 of these in combination with some bolts of ember silk cloth and you can make one of the dream cloth but again there's only five elements so you can only make five cloth a week and each of the crafting recipes require six so having a few that are tailoring alchemy and then every second week being able to sell an epic item and every day being able to transmute gold would just be pretty insane but having as many alchemists as possible to pump out true golds mark my words that will be the best way to make passive gold. So if you've got any profession slots spare, put them as alchemy. I am currently putting every single one of my alts that is not my mage as alchemy as we speak. Not literally as we speak, but you know, it's general time period. Another profession definitely worth having access to. So at least having it on your alt would be inscription now inscription can actually be incredibly strong for let's say the first couple of weeks of launch because you won't have access to the big shoulder enchants that come from ferrazane because you're gonna have to unlock them and do all the rep grind and all of that so the best shoulder enchant you're going to be able to get is inscription so if you don't mind changing professions going into phase one as inscription and then when you get the ferrazane rep dropping inscription for another profession could also be something worth doing but at least for the first phase of cataclysm you want access to a scribe because the dark moon card decks will be a big seller much like dark moon card greatness was at the start of wrath of the lich king the only difference now is there's more than just one deck that's actually worth using so going around and herbing and then milling and trying to get some dark moon card decks together is going to be a good gold maker i'm not saying that's passive gold because of course it's not there's some effort required or um, spend some gold on the auction house mill some herbs hope you're lucky with the cards that you get but it's definitely worth having access to coming in at number five is a pretty obvious one for most but pre-stacking quests well again yeah it's still going to be worth it it's going to save you so much time at launch and getting those these items start a quest items that can sit nicely in your bank for the next couple of months is worthwhile i'll share over the next couple of weeks exactly what quest items i'm going to be going for and exactly what quests i'm going to be stacking on so make sure you click the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss that cheers if you've recently started playing wrath getting ready for kata 
then keeping hold of things like the key quest item from Saf in Nax, Anixia's head, or even if you can get hold of the reply code Alpha from Alduar. These are all going to be things that give big XP and most of them handed in Dalaran as well. Obviously, there's far more than that in the open world and quests that we're going to be stacking up on, but this is just something you could be doing now to prepare and give you reason as well if it's a new character that you're going into Cataron. Go back and do Nax and do Alduar and do things like that. Or even if it's a, a, an old character and you've been playing it since launch, but you never happen to get those items, go back and get them and just keep them now for Cataclysm. Like I mentioned at the start, there's going to be a lot of things that get removed when Cataclysm hits. The real big ones here are going to be raid related because it's going to be a hell of a lot easier getting groups for the content now, even if it's something that doesn't get removed. It's going to be so much easier to go and kill the Lich King on Heroic now or even just clear normal ICC now than it will be at level 85 when no one's interested in that content anymore. Even just going back and doing Nax. I know you'd need less people when you're 85, but there's going to be less people wanting to go there as well. But as you may or may not know, Cataclysm changes the world drastically. Not only the outside world, but many dungeons and raids as well. Now, there's going to be a lot of raid achievements that get removed, such as the Undying, the Immortal... There's several in Alduar, like Champion of Alduar, Conqueror of Alduar, he feeds on your tears. Then all of the TOGC raid achievements as well, they're all going to turn into Feats of Strength. So if you like getting Feats of Strength, or some of these even come with a title, of course, those titles are going to be unobtainable. I'll put a link in the description to everything that's going to get removed, so they're all things you can go and do now. But some big ones is, of course, Zolaman and Zolgorub are going to turn into a five-man heroic. So going in and getting those mounts that should become fully unobtainable when Cataclysm launches. And I say should because Blizzard could add the mounts into the heroic dungeons. They weren't in the heroic dungeons before, but there's opportunity to do that now. But I wouldn't risk it. Just go and try and get it. But like I say, there's a big extensive list of many, many things that you can go and do. So go and check that out rather than me just reading this list, which will take about 12 years. Now, another thing to do, which not everybody will be excited for or even bothered about, but Transmog is making its way into the game. Not only is it going to be making its way into the game, it should be in the collection tab format so once you've collected it you don't need to keep it in your bank or in your void storage you've just got that appearance now the reason i think this is important to actually think about now is because there's going to be lots of items that come cataclysm you're not going to be able to get things like the class weapons from molten core so benediction and anathema for priests or rock Della, longbow of the ancient keepers for hunters or even kelsara that's not going to be available for paladins and warriors anymore there's going to be tons of changes to loot tables in places like stratholm moradon old Alderman, even Deadmines and Shadowfan Keep because they're completely reworked. I mean, honestly, most of the content in Eastern Kingdoms and Kalimdor will change. The loot tables will change. Many of the item appearances will change. So having a look at some of the items that you actually like the look of that are going to be removed, probably worth going and picking up. I've got to be honest with you, I myself am not really bothered about Transmog. So this is probably one of the only things on the list that I'm not actively working on. I know many of you will care about how your character looks and you might want to go and grab some of these things that are going to be unobtainable. If I literally run out of things to do, which is highly unlikely, then even I might go and grab a few of them just so they're there if I I want to make my character look pretty. Another one is, are you poor? I mean, in game. No, I don't care about your financial status. The reason I say, are you poor? Is because there's going to be quite a good way of being able to get quite an influx of gold when Cataclysm comes. Now, the currency system changes in the Cataclysm pre-patch, where at the moment we've got all these different types of emblems or even all the way back to Badger Justice in TBC. All of this is going to be simplified, I want to say, in Cataclysm, where for PvE, you've just got justice points and valor points and then for pvp you've got honor points and conquest points you can probably imagine how that's going to work where justice points is pretty much your entry level currency where you're going to get your blue heroic level gear as in heroic dungeon level gear and then valor points is going to be your raid level gear and then as the phases progress justice points will be what you use for catch-up gear and valor points will be for current tier. Well, when this change happens, emblems are either going to convert into the new currency or they're going to convert into gold. And obviously on the basis we've got a currency exchanger, 
you can ensure that your emblems are transferred into gold if that's what you want to do. Whilst we don't know what the rate will be this time round, I would imagine it will be similar to what it was originally, where each emblem of heroism, valor, and conquest all converted to 5.5 gold per emblem. And if you've got any badges of justice left over from TBC, they were about 1.8 gold each. Now, all your emblems of triumph and emblems of frost, these are going to convert into the new justice point system. So if you've got a load of emblems of triumph and frost that you're not using, you could trade them down to, let's say, conquest, and then you can just work out how much gold you're going to get based on all of your emblems combined times 5.5 gold. It may not sound like a lot of gold, but if you've been doing heroics pretty much every day since the game launched, you could be sat on potentially thousands of these things. And again, it just gives you a little bit of reason to even do the odd heroic here and there all the way up until the Cataclysm pre-patch. Again, I just can't stress enough that if you want the gold and not the new justice points added, you're, you're going to need to trade them down. Now, if you're interested, the same will happen with all of the old sort of PvP currencies as well, where things like Spirit Shards, Venture Coins, Stonekeeper Shards, Wintergrass Marks of Honor, all of these will be transferred into Honor in the pre-patch as well. Unfortunately, none of those can be transferred into gold though. Number nine would be ways to travel around during the pre-patch. And this might sound like a strange one are items that teleport you to places like Dalaran with the Kirantor ring or even the older engineering teleporters. Teleports to all the cities was actually removed from Dalaran in the Cataclysm pre-patch originally but it was later added back in in 4.1 but only Ogrimmar and Stormwind. Instead trainers was put where the portals are just to give reason to still want to go to Dalaran occasionally. So I'm hoping that the Ogrimmar and Stormwind portals are actually going to be there because they was added back in 4.1 and we know they're going to be probably using most things from a 4.3.4 state, which aka that's the final patch state. The reason it's going to be important is because again, if it works as it did historically, in the second part of the pre-patch, if we get it in two parts, if it's only in one, it'll just be in the pre-patch, you're going to get access to archaeology. But even though you get access to archaeology, you still shouldn't be able to fly until Cataclysm actually launches. If you're a two-handed weapon user, you are going to want to level archaeology because you will want this big sword. It's going to be literally the best thing you're going to get before heroic raiding. Don't get me wrong, there's many other reasons to level archaeology for other classes, but this should almost be a must if you you're a rep paladin a warrior a dk whatever so having access to items that can travel you around pretty quick is going to be really useful so things like jaina's locket which you might not even thought about buying as i mentioned earlier the kirantor ring they're all just going to help you when you look at your map when you're archaeology and things are all the way on the other side of the world and you're like well right, how am i going to get there this is this is going to take ages you'll have just ways to get about. And then the final one is understanding how the stats are going to change. The reason I want to mention this is because in the pre-patch, some items that you've probably passed on or have been disenchanted could be your bis for that short amount of time or actually just be better to use while you're leveling. Because remember as well, reforging is going to be in the pre-patch. So while you've got no access to mastery on gear, you will be able to reforge stats that you've got on your current gear from ICC and get 40 percent of that stat as mastery and classes like ferals warriors rogues that aim for massive amounts of armor pen or really getting hard capped with armor pen are going to find their gear changing quite drastically because there is no armor pen so having a look at how some of your items are going to change might actually sway your decision on some of these items going for disenchant when you could pick them up now and they're actually going to be mega useful. Now, I don't want you to stress too much about being full bis because the gear is going to help, don't get me wrong, but it's going to help you for the first level or maybe even two because by the time you're level 81 or 82, you could have replaced every piece of gear. What makes the current gear strong is if you've got good set bonuses and even then, some of those will be replaced pretty quick because remember, no mastery on old gear outside of reforging on it and a lot of classes make really good use of mastery and using spellcaster dps as an example in the pre-patch you're going to get spell hit from spirit so there could be spirit gear that at the moment you just look at and you're like why would i use that and it'll actually be really strong during the pre-patch and again strong for leveling i'm going to throw one last little bonus one in and that's just get loads of gold i'm not even going to go into detail why there's lots of things that you can buy in cataclysm which are really cool one example would be the Sandstone Drake, which will be mega expensive. The first ones that are actually on the auction house, but just farm as much gold as you can. The more gold you've got to launch, it's just going to help out. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe. 
loads more Cata content coming. So subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.